It's a Spanish quest 16 years in the making. Looks promising, very promising. With two out of four animals already down, I'm returning to Spain to complete the Ibex slam. It's an uphill climb for this mountain of a hunting achievement on this Sporting Classics. Some adventures are found at the crossroads of epic and unforgettable, and they're best enjoyed with a close friend, a companion who cherishes the sporting life just as much as you do. It's someone who knows the magic contained in the simple phrase, opening day, and who understands that the words hunter and conservationist are one and the same, for we've been giving back for generations. And sharing the outdoors with someone who celebrates the history, the art, and the romance of this way of life makes for a friendship to last the ages. One where the sound of a snickering horse, the crackling of a mountain campfire, or the whiff of gunpowder will transport you to that same stirring part of the soul. Welcome to Sporting Classics. That old trusted friend who shares your love of adventure and reminds you of the greatest Stop. days of your life. There's four, do you see four? Yeah, I see them. They're all rams, aren't they? All Billy. I first started coming to Spain close to 20 years ago now, and it was, it was Ibex that brought me here the first time. I kind of fell in love with the culture, the people. And when I say culture, I don't just mean the overall culture, but the hunting, the sporting culture in Spain is alive and well. But for shooting them, we need to change over there because from here, we don't have a good angle. So I fell in love with the people, the place, and the hunting that's found here, and, and why not come back? I have returned to the Iberian Peninsula to hunt ibex in the mountains of southern Spain. This is where Europe and Africa meet in a melting pot of cultures influenced by ancient Romans and the Moors. Today, Spain is a bucket list destination for international hunters, boasting a wonderful variety of big game and wing shooting opportunities. Hunting abroad is a passion of mine, and I always pack my Winchester rifle in a Negrini case to keep it safe and to travel in style. Good old Negrini. Lightweight, strong, easy to tote. The better mousetrap. After unpacking the Model 70 TAC driver, my guide Val Bellis and I will give it a quick check before heading out to complete the Ibex slam. It's a good pack. I like that pack. Do you need more? No, it should be good. Okay. Somebody got ears on? Yeah. Turn it off. Looks like it's on the left side of the square. Left side of the square, I think, but it's hard to tell. Well, did I hit the board? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was on. You were shooting here, right? Yeah. Still might bring that up a couple clicks. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I need to shoot it again, but I'm, I'm going to bring it up just a, just a titch more. Okay. Okay. Let's go shoot an Ibex. Yeah. The road to an Ibex slam is, well, steep. All four subspecies of Ibex live in different mountainous regions of Spain. My first hunt for Ibex was for the Grados Ibex in the central mountains of Spain, just west of Madrid. Did you see the Ibex? Okay. My down. No. Oh. One okay. Okay, <laughs> Christian, very good shoot. Oh, yeah, because the Ibex. Yeah, he was ready to go, wasn't yes. he? Yes. On the home, perfect. Very thick. Well, thanks again, partner. Congratulations. <laughs> very good. Thank, Thank you very in. much, Paco. Yeah. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Two years later, I returned with my brother to hunt the Sierra Nevada Ibex in southeastern Spain. Here we go, here we go. Hey! Good shoot! Good shoot! Congratulations! Good shoot! Hey, everybody. 
<laughs> they are just cool, aren't they? They're just wow. neat animals. They just yeah. they live in beautiful places. They're a lot of fun to hunt. Yeah. Gives you another excuse to come to Spain. So that's two of the four that I've taken. <laughs> One more excuse to come back was to hunt the other two ibex. And why not? You know, the Vicente and the Ronda, the smallest and the largest ibex, were on my list on this trip. And, and really, again, it was just the excuse to come back to Spain as if I needed one more excuse. Hunting on these wild game reserves in Spain requires the presence of a hunting official. Alfonso is similar to a game warden back in the States. We're after the Ronda Ibex, which is for me the third of four in Spain. This is the kind of country they're in these big, big rocky hills. We've been hunting in, in Ronda. They have a small body, a small trophy, small horn. Usually they are living around eight, nine years old, no more, because life is very difficult for them. Once we got up high, we started, you know, just kind of sifting through the landscape and the rocks down here. And suddenly you would just, one would sort of pop out of the, the green vegetation and, and there's an ibex and there's another ibex over here. And, and Alphonse just, he spins around, just glances back and sees you know, 250 yards away, he sees an ibex perched on a rock. Is that the big one? You just turned left? Yeah. He's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> he just stepped off. He just went to the left. No, it's difficult to see them. Impossible now. Val just, you know, he, he knew I was, I was dumbfounded. I was bummed. I, I was really disappointed. And uh, to, to miss that opportunity was really a, was a real, I wouldn't say tragedy, but a bummer anyway. Well, there's always tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Damn. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester Repeating Arms. Walther, it's your duty to be ready. Silencer Central, silence delivered. Boomerex Air Guns, the year of the air gun hunter. Right on, see the difference. And by Sea Run Cases, handmade and travel tough. We were only a couple hours out of Malaga, a very arid area. It doesn't rain, but maybe seven or eight times a year, apparently. Unless, of course, we show up with a camera crew and... We had the very bad weather. It was snowing, it was raining, so it was a very difficult hunt. But, you know, we're hunting and, and we're hunters. Finally, we had a break. I mean, it was just, it was gonna be a couple of hours where they thought the clouds would lift a bit and then another system was coming in. But in that two hours, we had to get up and over a giant hill over into the next valley. And that was our hope, that was our plan. Sure enough, we got over there and, and it paid off. Is it on the rocks there? Do you see it? And it was a damn good one. And uh, so we got set up in a hurry and, and uh, rested on a pack and, Oh, yeah, 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 I got him, I got him. The ibex just jumped on top of a kind of a ledge presenting itself. Okay, here we go, here we go. And uh, gave me just enough of a window. <sighs> Boom, I shot and he just drops to the shot. <sighs> oh, fantastic, fantastic. What a hunt. Say, well, we earned this guy. <laughs> Good shot. So we just picked our way through the, the cover and, and I was damn happy to get him. The Ronda Ibex, spectacular. Yep. I tell you what, he looked beautiful on the crag up there, didn't he? He just posed. Thanks, buddy. Good job. Thank you. So is it like sheep? Every one of these is a year of yes, growth? Yes, yes. Okay. Every ring is one year. Yeah, he's 10, 12 years old. Yeah. That's an old, old Ibex young. right there. Fantastic. Thanks to God, we had a little window. With this window, 
with our time. Somebody say amen. Yeah. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> Good. Ah, great stuff. Great memories. Perfect. Really great to be with you guys. <laughs> You know, once you get up into that rarefied air of, of an alpine hunt and you finally close the deal on the animal, that's just an incredibly rewarding experience. Uh, and that's something that mountain game just offers more than anything else, in my opinion. That's why you do this stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it's not easy you. shot. <laughs> Thank you. That was really good to be with you. We had about an eight hour drive from the, the area we're hunting, the Ronda, to get up to this stunning landscape we're in right now where the, the biggest of all the ibex in Spain reside, the Pesete. And it's stunning landscape. I mean, we've had a lot of clouds, a lot of rain, snow here as well, just completely unusual weather. It's almost April, highly unusual. But uh, what the heck, just uh, immerse yourself in, in the cards you're dealt and, and play it out. And here is Carlos. Carlos is the guy that is working here for the local government. And he knows two, three ibexes that they were ready for Chris. This is the best Bicete ibex zone in all of Spain. And so these guys were adamant that we don't just take a good ibex. They're, they're really looking for an exceptional, heavy, mature, long, probably 12 to 14 year old. This can be the father but not the grandfather. We are looking for a grandfather. It's got to be a beast or they're absolutely not going to take it. There's plenty of them around. What do you think? For you, no. no. And we finally were, were glassing and glassing. We looked at all sorts of herds and individuals, and we'd done stalks through the, the valleys and up the cliffs, glassing and glassing. Looked at probably three, 400 different animals. We got a bunch of them up there, look at them all. Looks promising, very promising. And finally, we come around to Ben, and there's a winter wheat field right below kind of a tree hillside. And these ibex had come out of that cover, and they're feeding, and there is one, I mean, it looks like a tank. He's on the left side. 200 yards. He's about 200 yards away, feeding, goes into some cover. He's by the trees now. It's that one. And the whole sort of herd moves down below. They're about 150 yards away. We get set up, they sort of spook, and they're at about two, 250. You can just see these massive antenna-like antlers, super heavy all the way out, and I mean, just a beast of, a, of an ibex. Okay, here we go, as soon as it gets broadside. And I'm on them. Felt really good. Boom, I shoot, and he just comes straight up in the air. I thought, you know, perfect behind the shoulder shot. You know, this thing's, he's toast. Is that him going up? Okay. And he runs, and he runs, and he keeps on running. He's the last one. Probably was an easy shot for him, for sure, because he has a great experience. But for some reason, I, I cannot understand why uh, the shot was lower. Something's going on, and, and we, didn't, we didn't find any blood. We went and looked. There was, no, there was no impact. My guess is the bullet just went just barely underneath him. That's why he shot up. Anyway, we, we took that rifle and said, look, I've, I've got to shoot this gun again. That looks low, doesn't it? Yeah, low left. Low left and it's almost five inches lower. Put that at 250 and you're talking about 10, 12 inches lower. And you're only talking about an animal that's about that deep in the chest. So I was sick to my stomach because it was just an epic beast. I mean, that was as big a, an ibex as you'll see anywhere, just massive. And uh, yeah, it was a tough one. The miss was a humbling experience, but it was just one fleeting moment of one passing day. These hills and these roads had borne witness to triumphs and tragedies for thousands of years. Walking on these weathered cobblestones will take you back in time as you think of all that has transpired in this gorgeous landscape. 
So the Romans built this how, yes. how many years ago? Probably uh, 2,000 years ago. This bridge is made with dry stones. So only dry stones. So it's stacked, it's no mortar. No. Wow. Wow. Just to imagine something standing for 2,000 years. Yes. I mean, that's, what do you build today that would last 2,000 years? Hey, nothing, nothing. 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 So we've got to get to the top of that mountain up there. And there's a giant monarch with my name on it, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a place, quite a history. Want more big game? Check out Chris Dorsey's newest book, Director's Cut, a 400-page full-color celebration of big game hunting. Each signed copy comes with a four-hour companion film. Order today. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester repeating arms. Walter, it's your duty to be ready. Silencer Central. Silence delivered. Boomerex Air Guns, the year of the air gun hunter. Negrini cases, ultra light, ultra strong, the pinnacle of Italian design and technology. And by Safari Club International. Join the fight to protect hunting across the country and around the world. Get <laughs> some rich coffee right there. That'll put hair on your chest. That's about as much of a cup as you can handle right there. That's high octane stuff. A little bit crunchy, just the way I like it. <laughs> Coffee. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Drinking coffee is a good time to reminisce, and on this morning, as I look ahead in anticipation of completing the Ibex Slam, I also look back at the other slams I have achieved over the years. These are collections of the greatest hunts our sport has to offer, including the North American 29. Beautiful cape, beautiful animal. That is just freaking spectacular, isn't it? Africa's Deadly Seven, where a bad shot could cost you your life. I get reload. One shot. What a beast. My finale for the Turkey World Slam took place in the thick cover of the Yucatan Peninsula, as we called in a stunning and iridescent oscillated turkey. Benito! <laughs> Boy, Ben, 25 years in the making, the end of the slam, and uh, yeah, what else is there to say? In Africa's spiral slam, culminating in an unforgettable hunt for Mount Ninyala in the cloud forest of Ethiopia. Here we go. There's your bull, Chris. Whew. Now I can really Dude. give you a congrats, man. Dude, man, that was fantastic. Congrats. Oh, look at that. So mass awesome to hunt with. Yeah, he's heavy, isn't he? And sure enough, the next morning we get out and we had spotted a, a, just an old warrior, just an ancient, ancient Billy, not far from the village. He was all by himself, probably coming down there, probably didn't have another year or two left in him. Should be right below that lip. Right below, right, yeah. And got up above him, did a nice little stalk, and he has no idea we're here. You guys ready? Here we go. He had no idea we were down there. He's 100 yards away. We get set up again, and this time the gun was on, and, and we closed the deal. He's done. Finito. No, yes. Kaput! <laughs> we got him. Thank you, well thank done. you. Bravo. <laughs> Same kind of weather, but it worked. We got a little break in the rain, so it yeah. worked out well. We've been luck. <laughs> thank Good. you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Yeah, <laughs> And he make a very, very good shot. 
shot was perfect, was at the middle of the shoulder, so the Ibex was not suffering. And then we've been very lucky because it was the Ibex that we were looking for. It is a very old animal and the job was well done. Oh, look at that guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stunning, look at that. That's why you come to Spain. This is the last, here it is, the Bicete. The last of the Spanish Ibex for me. What a fantastic journey. Look at that guy. An old warrior. Monarch of the mountains right here. Incredible. I mean, what a difference between the Ronda, the smallest, obviously, and the Bicete, the biggest. Yeah. Dramatic difference. Yeah. yeah just dramatic. You're right. Let's Country's see. different. Everything about that hunt was very different than this one. Yeah. Really is a, a very unique. Bicete and Gredo, they are the, the biggest one that we have here. Yeah. and this was the last of the four Ibex for me. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's the end of a chapter of Ibex hunting, but I'll be damned if I'm not coming back to Spain. I love Spain. If I hunt Ibex again, great. If I hunt boar, if I hunt roe deer, if I shoot driven partridge, it doesn't matter to me. If I just come here to enjoy Madrid or the countryside, Spain is a wonderful, wonderful country with fantastic people, tremendous outdoor activities, but, but so much more. I think Hemingway wrote about Spain as really one of the most wonderful outdoor adventure places in all of the world. And I think he's right. From the fishing, to the bird shooting, to the ibex, to the culture itself, the food, the people, the landscapes, I mean, it's just an incredible destination.